All right. One of the most common questions I usually get from my clients is how should I cut the feed cost? So this answer is quite simple. By replacing the most expensive ingredients in your diet. So today we are going to talk about soybean meal replacers in livestock diets and see how we can replace soybean meal considering the economic uh, feasibility. So first I'm just gonna introduce some potential replacers uh, you can use in your diets instead of soybean meal. It includes animal protein like fish meal or poultry byproducts or meat and bone meal. Also some uh, you know, plant ingredients like canola meal, cottonseed meal, sunflower meal, safflower meal, sesame seed meal, corn gluten meal, corn ger germ meal, uh, peanut meal, and sometimes uh, single cell protein like yeast. So these are, you know, some common ingredients that we can use in our diets replacing the soybean meal. But for sure, before replacing part of the soybean meal or the whole amount of soybean meal with, you know, these ingredients, we need to have some economic feasibility um, calculations. So we need to compare the cost of the replacer to soybean meal on a per unit digestible protein or amino acid basis. Sometimes I'm hearing from some people that they are calculating the real cost of an ingredient based on the uh, unit of protein, but it's not the case. We need to consider the protein quality, which is digestible protein, and calculate a value of an ingredient based on the unit of digestible protein. So here, what we need to do, um, let's say we are considering a soybean meal with 47% crude protein and 90% digestibility. And the cost of this protein, this uh, soybean meal is $931 per ton. And we have a replacer let's say one of those ingredients that I mentioned, with 42% two, two, uh, protein, 85% digestibility, uh, digestibility for protein, and the cost is $800 per ton. So should I replace my soybean meal with this replacer or not? So at the first glance, we can see the replacer is cheaper, but we need to do some calculations, of course. You can get these digestibility values for ingredients, um, proteins, from nutritional uh, tables, like from NRC for poultry or for pigs or for cattle. So, or you can do, you know, a, you know, in vitro uh, digestibility test using pepsin and see how much of your protein is digestible, or maybe if somebody can do, they can run in vivo trial on animals and see how much uh, digestible protein they can get from ingredients. But the simplest way is just to use those values provided in nutritional uh, tables. So let's do the uh, calculations. So economic feasibility calculations. First, we need to look at the digestible protein from these two ingredients. Soybean meal, which I said SBM. See, it has a 47% protein, as you can see here, with 90% digestibility, right? So if I multiply its protein by 90% coefficient of digestibility, it's going to give me 42.3% digestible protein. And this value is 35.7% for the replacer. So we just multiplied, you know, the protein value of that replacer by its digestibility. 
So now we can do our calculations. So what you need to do, you need to calculate protein value ratio. So by dividing replacer digestible protein by soybean meal digestible protein. So we've got 35.7 35 divided by 42.3. It's going to give you uh, 0.844. So the replacer provides about 84.4% of the protein value of soybean meal. And now you can calculate the real, uh, you know, price value for your replacer. So how much was the soybean meal? 931. So if we multiply it by 84.4%, it's going to give you this value, $786 per ton. It should be, you know, an ideal price for the replacer. But our replacer here is $800 per ton, which is expensive, right? So in this case, I wouldn't replace soybean meal by this replacer because it seems a little bit expensive. So it is the kind of calculations you need to do. But of course, when you are uh, replacing soybean meal with a replacer, you need to consider some other factors. First is protein quality. So we talked about digestibility of the protein, which is important. You saw replacer at the first glance was cheaper than soybean meal. But when we included the protein quality, we saw, no, it's actually uh, more expensive than soybean meal. So this is one factor we need to consider. The other factor is amino acid profile. So let's say some replacers, you know, has less methionine than soybean meal or less lysine than soybean meal. So we need to consider this stuff as well, which I will talk about in my next slide. We talked about cost of replacer to soybean meal on a per unit of digestible protein or amino acid bases and also anti-nutritional factors. You know, soybean meal by itself has its own anti-nutritional factor, which is uh, antitrypsin or we call it trypsin inhibitor. So trypsin, you know, is an enzyme in the body that is responsible for uh, digestion of protein. So when we say antitrypsin is present, you know, in the soybean meal, it means that it can inhibit the activity of trypsin enzyme in the body. And by that, it can decrease the protein digestibility, which is not good. So we need to, you know, do heat treatment on soybean meal to actually destroy this anti-nutritional factor. So other replacers maybe have their own, you know, anti-nutritional factor. For example, in cottonseed meal, we have a uh, gossipel, which can, you know, compromise our animal's uh, production. So that's why we need to uh, add iron sulfate to those diets that we are using cottonseed meal in them. Or let's say with some other uh, replacers, we have tannin, which can again decrease the protein digestibility. So overall, whenever you want to replace uh, soybean meal with one of those replacers, you need to consider anti-nutritional factors in those replacers as well. And also we need to pay attention to the production level and the physiological age of our animals. Let's say talking about high producing animals, like let's say uh, dairy cow in their peak production or laying hens in their peak production, let's say around uh, 30 weeks of age, 33 weeks of age. So for those high producing animals, we shouldn't replace soybean meal totally with other replacers. Specifically, we need to consider, you know, the palatability of those replacers. Sometimes it's, it can be, uh, you know, 
dangerous to just use those replacers. And if their palatability is low, then it's gonna affect feed intake. And by that, it's gonna affect, you know, the um, production level. That's why in, let's say, non-producing animals like pullets, it's uh, easier, you know, to replace most of the soybean meal or completely by another replacer. But for high producing animals, we need to be more careful. So I have put together some information about, you know, these protein ingredients and specifically about their inclusion rates, because sometimes, you know, some people are not sure how much they can use each of these ingredients in the diets. So I have provided a guideline for poultry, ruminants, and the swine. So if you want, you can uh, download it from my website and I'll post the link up here. And also I'll put the link in the description of this video. And please let me know if you have any questions and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Have a great day wherever you are and stay safe and happy feeding with your animals. Bye.